Greetings. Today we have an original Xbox. A friend of mine gave it to me and asked me to have a look at it because it doesn't power up. It's plugged into power. And it's deader than a door now. Obviously seems, I mean, when there's no sign of life whatsoever, it's most probably the power supply. So let's have a look inside. This is a version 1.0. And the way we get inside is uh, there are six screws. Now you can see these two screws are exposed, which means this is probably modded. He's had this for a long time, so this most likely has a hardware mod in it, but uh, there are four additional screws, one under each of the rubber feet, which we just pry off with a screwdriver. And proceed to remove all of the screws with a what is it? With a T15 screwdriver. After getting the six screws out, we turn it back right side up and grab the top of the case. lift it off. And there you go. We have the DVD drive, the hard drive, and everything else is underneath. To get out, the power supply sits under here. So let's uh, we need to remove the hard drive assembly first by taking out the ribbon cable power cable and there is a single screw which is a uh, T10 over here holding the hard drive sled in position And then we lift the whole thing out, since it's already been disconnected. And there's the power supply. Let's have a closer look at that. Here's the top view of it. And one thing, I don't know how clearly it shows up on the video, but there's quite a bit of discoloration in this area over here. There's a resistor you can't really see, but you can't even read the markings on it. It's, it's seen very high heat. And let's see if we get a little closer. You can see that uh, that part's been cooking for a long time and one or more components have given up. So let's get that thing out. But first, let's see if there's any power. If we turn it on, if it's supplying any power to the motherboard. Good way to do that is to basically check it at the hard drive connector and we got power plugged in and nothing basically what the power switch does is it hooks what is it the blue wire I have to look it up, but it basically shorts the blue wire and the white wire, I think, 
and that's what turns on the power supply. But if it's not supplying any power, including standby power, then the switch isn't going to work. So we can test the other power line, and that is dead too. So that, along with the discoloration we saw, seems to imply that that power supply is deader than the door now. Power supply came out. Disconnect the motherboard connector. And there's two screws holding it to the case. Now when we check underneath, and again I don't know how good that shows up, but that's the cooked area there, right in the middle of the picture. And I mean even some of the solder joints have gone bad in there because of all the heat. And let's see if we can get a better view of it of the discolored section. Maybe this shows you a little better, but here in the middle of these two transformers over here, there's a lot of discoloration. And here are the solder joints. are not in very good shape anymore. Again, pointing to a lot of heat. Here's the underneath of the case and feast your eyes on this. Again, there's heat damage over here. So that part that we just looked at that was discolored sits right over this. And uh, eventually something in there blew up. I did a bunch of poking around and what I found was that AC is coming in from this side but it basically disappears after this transformer over here. And uh, it's a switching power supply. We can hunt we can check, we can do a whole bunch of stuff here, but uh, in a previous version, in a previous video, actually a few years ago, I fixed the switching power supply in a small Sony color TV. And it was a very non-gratifying job because every time I fixed, found a bad component and replaced it, I would uh, start up uh, the TV and something else would blow in it. And uh, I did that for three or four times. And finally, finally, I found a Zener diode that had opened up. And that was causing a whole bunch of things to blow. I finally replaced the Zener diode. The TV started to work, but I had schematics for it. I don't have schematics for this. Some of the components are obviously... Uh, uh, marked capacitors, some transistors, some optos over here, but other stuff isn't. And that's going to make it uh, pretty difficult. Here's a view of the back of it. There's a surface mount diode here, since I mentioned diodes, right in the uh, burned up area. So it would probably be a nice place to start measuring components. And let's see, going to diode check and checking this component and not obscuring the meter we can see that the uh, diode, well, the diode itself or something in its path is dead shorted. I don't know what the valuation, what the uh, value is of, of this component. It's uh, labeled ZD something, so it's a Zener diode. But at this point, not having seen uh, the schematics, I have no idea what that is. And there can be a whole bunch of other things wrong over here. So now we have to use a uh, 
better engineering approach to this because repairing this on a component level is going to take most likely going to take a really long time so what do we do well I went to eBay and searched and good or bad you can pretty much find anything on eBay I found a replacement supply it's identical has the uh, what is it the 12 pin connector looks the same I didn't check the part number in particular but uh, it seems identical made by Delta this thing cost me what $28 shipped and I think it's used but tested and I think this is going to save us hours and hours and hours of headache for grins let's see what this same diode that measured uh, shorted on the uh, other board what it measures at here and if I can get these leads on here correctly this one measures correct 611 millivolts well it's it's in the right neighborhood indicating a good diode doesn't mean that the zener voltage is correct on it but uh, it sure is better than a dead short so let's install this one and see if that makes the machine well again I got curious about what sort of a mod chip there is in here had to remove the uh, DVD drive but there it is an original Xenium mod chip and uh, well that makes it that much more uh, it makes that much more sense to fix this Xbox because it already has that chip in there which is probably a collector's item at this point all right back together it goes okay we're mostly there there are two screws holding the DVD in place on the right side and uh, the left side over here once those are removed the sled comes out power supply has two screws which I haven't put back in yet make sure to plug in the uh, motherboard power connector and this one goes into the hard drive okay it's all back together place your bets I'll put in a power cord and just see if it powers up Ta -da! doing this because of the mod chip you can basically specify what colors you want the uh, LED to be and what it does but obviously it powered up so we're going to put it all back together again and see if it plays a DVD and if the drive opens it does okay and here's the aforementioned uh, TV set that caused me a lot of pain and suffering but it's an app display this uh, device to see uh, if she works so uh, got a joystick in got a video cable we got power off we go so it boots into the dashboard oh and then goes to the mod chip well there you go
Very nice. So let's see what's on here. Games. Lots of stuff. Does it play any of these? Sure looks like it. Yeah, she's back. And now, for one of the things that uh, quite often goes wrong, Let's see if it'll actually read a physical disk. This is coming off the modded hard drive, and it works fine. So let's reboot to the dashboard. Okay, we're going to need uh, some sort of a dashboard here. So, launch menu, executor, yes. And there you go. Looks like it's happy. Everything seems to work. So even though, in general, I also prefer component level repairs, not on this one. It was much easier to get a new power supply and get this thing up and running again. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and leave me a comment, and we'll see you next time.